Notion Calendar. She's had some mixed reviews. And while I love the app, there's been one thing that has been keeping me from using it up until now. And that is the ability to see my Notion Calendar inside of Notion itself. But recently Notion released Notion Home, a new landing page for when you open up Notion. And now we finally have a place to view our calendar events. Now, am I still hoping for additional embed options? Absolutely. But for now, this was the motivation that I needed to really start using a Notion calendar and I am so glad that I did. So before I show you my Notion calendar workflow, I first want to show you how you can get started with it and some of my favorite features. The easiest place to get started with Notion calendar is to come to your Notion sidebar over here on the left hand side and come down to where it says calendar. Now, if you have never created a Notion calendar account, it's gonna prompt you to go ahead and create one by connecting your Google account. Or if you have created one, this is where you're going to connect it. So either way, go ahead and click this button. And if you do have it already connected, it's just going to pop open your Notion calendar right here. The first thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure your Google calendar account is connected. So you're either going to want to go to here to settings or manage your calendar accounts to connect your Google Calendar account. Now, if you followed my way of opening Notion Calendar, it should have already connected your Notion account to it because you started in Notion to begin with. But just to be safe, we can come over here to the Notion tab and add your Notion workspace right here. Lastly, if you ever set up meetings with people either via Zoom or Google Meet, I highly recommend setting up this conferencing right here. This allows you to connect your conferencing account to Notion Calendar, and then you can send out scheduling snippets, which I'll talk about in just a second. And it's super nice because people can just schedule meetings with you. So if that's a function you're gonna use, definitely connect that. There are also some preferences that you're gonna to want to go ahead and set up within your Notion Calendar. So if you go to general here, you can set up things like what day you want to start your week on, whether or not you want your location links to show up in Google Maps or Apple Maps, some notification preferences, and even your menu bar. So if you're using Apple and you have a Notion Calendar up at the top of your menu, you can see your upcoming meetings, join Zoom meetings from there. It's super great, but you want to come here and make sure these are all to your liking first. Moving on to features, one feature that I love is the ability to connect Notion pages to your events. So for an example, I have a meeting on Monday with one of my clients, and if I click on that meeting, I have the option to search for Notion documents right here. So I can find the page that is specific to her project that I'm working on and connect it right to the event. As a bonus, this now shows up in my Notion homepage too, so I can click to join the Google Meet and click right into that Notion page that I connected. Another feature I love is scheduling snippets. Now you may have heard about this one. It's a pretty popular feature because it's really cool. So what you can do is go ahead and share your availability, grab any of the times that you're free, and then it's going to create a little availability snippet for you to send to somebody that you might want to create a meeting with. As long as you connected your conferencing like we talked about in our setup earlier, you can choose whether or not you want to have conferencing with the scheduling snippet. So as long as you leave it that you do, it's going to automatically create a Google Meet or Zoom meeting for you, which is super convenient. This is my new favorite way to schedule on the fly meetings because it is just so quick and convenient for people to set up meetings with you. The last feature that I'm absolutely loving is the event blocking. The way this works is you can choose a specific calendar to event block onto another calendar. So for example, maybe I want to block my personal events onto my conferences, and then that way, if anybody's looking at my conferences calendar, it's gonna show that I'm busy when I have my personal events too. When you choose to do event blocking, it's going to give the option to include details, which means it's gonna include what that event is, or it can just say, I'm busy during this time. So totally up to you which one you want to include. Now, when you set up event blocking, it is actually creating events on Google Calendar on your other calendars. However, if you're in Notion, you are not going to see that. So it keeps your calendars very clean on the Notion calendar side of things. Now, you might be wondering if somebody has access to all of your calendars, why would this matter? Why would you want to do this? So I want to share a quick example with you on why this can be really important. 
A while back, I was using Calendly to do a lot of my scheduling for meetings. At the time, I was trying to squeeze as much as I could out of the free version, which means it can only see one of your Google calendars. So in this case, it would look at my conferences calendar, add things to that calendar, but then also would double check that one to make sure there wasn't anything conflicting. And this meant anything that was put on my personal calendar would not be checked. To be clear, you can change that in the paid version, but again, I was trying to get as much as I could out of the free version. So within Notion Calendar, I went in and blocked my personal events onto my conferences calendar to make sure that I didn't have to see that in Notion Calendar, but then on Google Calendar, everything would be on my conferences calendar. Then when Calendly looked at my conferences calendar, it would see my personal events too, and I would not have to worry about anything conflicting and I made it all work on the free version. This was actually the first feature I used on Notion Calendar immediately when it came out because it solved my issue so quickly. However, I'm not really using it now because I switched off of Calendly. I'm using Dubsado as a CRM and they handle all of that, thankfully. And so I use a mix of Dubsado for my workflows. And if something random happens to pop up, I just use the scheduling snippet here in Notion Calendar. But hopefully that gave you some ideas on how you can use Notion Calendar on your backend workflows. Now, I know these aren't all of the cool features available on Notion Calendar. So if you want me to dive into more features, let me know in the comments. But these are the features that I personally have used and loved. So now let's get into my personal Notion Calendar workflow. So over here on the left-hand side, this is where I have my Google Calendar connected. I have four Google Calendars connected. One is my conferences calendar, which means any meetings or things along those lines are going onto that calendar. My next one is my personal calendar. So any personal events are going here, appointments, anything like doctor's appointments or things along those lines. And then lastly, I have my time blocking calendar. I have one calendar that's hidden. This is just like that generic one that comes with your Google account and I can't get rid of it. So I just have it hidden and I don't really keep anything on there. And then the other one I have is my husband, so I can just kind of check in with what's going on in his life if I need to be aware of anything and plan my week around it if necessary. Then below that we have our Notion workspace calendar. So these are any calendar views that you have set up in Notion right now that you want to also show in the Notion calendar app. Just a note, you can only open databases inside of Notion Calendar if they are already in Calendar View somewhere within Notion. So I have three different Notion databases that I connect to my Notion Calendar. One is my content database calendar. So if I turn that on, you can see what pieces of content I'm gonna be publishing on which days. And I really just keep this here for reference if I need to see it. So it's off for most of the time. My next calendar is my annual planning calendar. This is where I put any big events that I know are happening or any marketing promotions that I'm planning and any holidays that I want to show here. So for example, 4th of July was yesterday and I had that on my annual planning calendar. And I just like to keep this here as a reminder, like, hey, it's a holiday take the day off, that kind of stuff. And the reason I keep this in the Notion side of things is because I reference it multiple different areas within Notion so I can see what is going on. Then the last database I have connected here is my tasks. And so those show up as the little gray tasks here whenever I need to be working on things. So you might be wondering why my time blocking is all on one calendar. And the reason is because I want to be able to turn it off sometimes. So I can just easily toggle that on and off, same with my tasks, and then only see events and things like that that are actually happening. I feel like having time blocking can make things look so crazy, even though it's not really that crazy. So I do like just having the option to flick that on and off. I do also want to note that my point in time blocking is not to follow it to a T. I value the freedom to not be tied down to a schedule. However, I am very bad about overloading my plate and this actually ends up taking away from my time freedom. So I use time blocking as more of ideal time blocking. So as you can see, I carve out chunks in the morning for like personal tasks, social media content systems, things like that. And then in the evenings I work on my client work. Then inside those blocks, I actually block out my tasks. And that just makes sure that I am being realistic in what I can accomplish each day. This does not mean that I'm doing a certain task at a certain time. For example, obviously it says that I should be working out right now, 
and I'm clearly not, but this does help me make sure that I am budgeting my time well. I talk more about the idea of an ideal time blocking schedule in my time blocking in Notion video, so if you want to hear more about my thoughts on this topic, you can check out that video. As you can see from my time blocking schedule, I always do my weekly reset on Friday afternoons, which is when I do my weekly planning. I've already gone through my weekly planning process within Notion, which is where I add all my tasks and assign my due dates. For more on my weekly planning process, you can check out my 2024 Notion tour. So now that I have added all my tasks and assigned due dates to them, I am hopping into Notion Calendar to update the time blocking portion of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the next seven days. I always plan Friday to Friday. So we'll start with the next day, which is Saturday and go through Friday. I will say I have an event next week that is a little up in the air that you can peep right here I truly do not know what's going on with this event, so I'm just gonna pretend it's not there and we're gonna plan a week like normal. I do know that my coffee date with my husband is not gonna happen tomorrow though, cause he is going to be traveling. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that guy. Sunday should be normal, so we're good. And then when we get to Monday, we start to see there's some things overlapping. I have a meeting with a client right here at 11.30, so obviously I'm not gonna be working on personal tasks during that time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust my ideal time block to not include that time. And then I'm just gonna move lunch down a half hour to make room for that meeting. Okay, there we go. Now we don't have anything overlapping. So I'm just gonna do the same thing for the rest of the week, double check that I don't have anything overlapping, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my tasks just for now so we can do that. Okay, there we go. This is a pretty easy week. I don't have a ton of meetings. Now, I also know that I'm not gonna have any client work next week. I am specifically not scheduling client work for a while because things are crazy on my end. And this meeting right here marks the end of that project for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these time blocking chunks here because I won't be doing client work. And that'll just be something for me to keep in mind this week that I can go ahead and schedule some tasks during that time that I might not have normally done. I also want to point out that I do like to keep white space in my schedule. Like I have these half hour chunks around breakfast time because that allows me to go read or do something else that I like in the morning instead of just jumping right into work. So don't be afraid to leave white space in your calendar. It is a great thing to have. All right, now that I have done that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my tasks. And now we can see all of those here. Again, these are pages directly from Notion. These are all of the tasks I added for the week already when I was doing my weekly planning. Part of my process when I do my weekly planning is to give time estimates on all of my tasks. So I reference this page right here when I am doing this portion. So now all I'm going to do is drag and drop my tasks onto this time block that is associated with that task. And I am blocking out that time based on the estimated time that I put in when I was doing my planning in Notion. This specific task is a course that I'm working on, so I think it's probably gonna take me about an hour and a half to get through that module. And then I'm actually not gonna schedule anything else before this meeting because I do not wanna cut it too close. The other thing is that I wanted to set up a pinning process for myself in Notion, so that might take about an hour to do, and I'll put that in the afternoon. And then I also had one cleaning task, which is one of the longest ones for me, so I'm gonna leave it as a full hour. <laughs> now I'm gonna follow that same pattern all the way across the full week. Okay, so now I have done that, and my tasks are all neatly put into the time block they are associated with. As you can see, I occasionally put some tasks into these little breaks, like starting the laundry or changing the sheets, because those are very quick things that I just want to do at the beginning of the day, and I maybe don't want to wait for my cleaning block in the afternoon to do that. That. So looking at this calendar, I feel very confident that I am not overloading my plate. There is plenty of white space still happening. I can get my tasks done in the time blocks I have associated for them, and I'm feeling pretty good about this week. Now there's one little trick that I want to share with you. If we scroll back to my previous week, you can see that my tasks do not show up here. So what's the deal with that? Well, what is super cool is you can actually show filtered views of databases from Notion in your Notion calendar. So what I did to make this work was I went into my weekly planning area that has a calendar view of my upcoming tasks, but this view is also filtered to not show things that are complete. So if I have checked something off the list, it's not showing up here. If we go back and see all of my 
previous months, there's no tasks there and that's because I did those tasks. So if you have a specific filtered view in Notion that you want to open up into Notion Calendar, you can hit this little button right here that says open in calendar and it's going to open that filtered view. So as an example, if I go to my daily planning page here and scroll down to my laundry task and click done, if we go back to Notion Calendar, we now see that that little laundry task that was here is gone. This is actually a process that I used to use in Google Calendar, but I stopped doing because I was adding all of my tasks in as Google Calendar tasks and they also existed in Notion. So it felt like a lot because I was checking things off of Google Calendar and checking things off of Notion. And I was just like, well, I don't really need a Google Calendar to tell me this. I can just do it from Notion. But now I can still do it from one place and see it in two different places, which is really cool. Now, if you want to use Notion Calendar as the place to go off of for all of your tasks, you totally can. If you click on your tasks, you can choose to open them in Notion and it's going to pop it up in Notion where you can then check it off. However, I highly encourage you to have a place like a daily planning page within Notion so you can easily check those things off and not have to worry about opening them from Notion Calendar. Notion Calendar is giving you the visual view of this, but you still want Notion to be where you're doing a bulk of your work. But I don't know about you, I think this is a pretty sweet addition to the workflow. If you tried this technique for using Notion Calendar, let me know. Give this video a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments what you think. I know it makes me personally feel a lot more confident in what I'm doing each day and it helps me keep more margin in my life. And until we get some more Notion Calendar embed options, if you want to know how to add an ideal time blocking calendar directly to your Notion pages, be sure to watch this tutorial next on how to do that. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.